Hey, what's up, guys? Jared Veldier here, back with you from the revamped recording room, aka office. Um, as you can see, you got some cool stuff behind me now. It's not just a white wall. Not quite as cool as the brick wall in the weight room, but you know what? We're going to do the video up here today, and I want to talk to you about alcohol use and some things that I do to prevent some of the side effects from it. So with alcohol, the devil is really in the dosage. Uh, there's been tons and tons of studies done that have shown that alcohol in moderation can have positive health effects. And there are also a lot of studies that show the detrimental effects of alcohol and how it can just destroy your health. And alcohol is tricky because, you know, some people have a hard time with substances. Um, it kind of creates this feedback loop that feels good and it's easy to give into and, and get carried away with. Um, you know, as, as I get older, um, you know, I can kind of form some strategies and habits around alcohol and have it fit in what I'm doing. So kind of the first thing that I do to strategize my alcohol intake is pick what time of the day I'm going to have my drink. Uh, I typically work out in the early afternoon and, uh, you know, I don't want to have a drink right after I'm done working out. I'd like, uh, to wait a little bit, kind of that magic drinking time during the day for myself is right around five o'clock, right around that dinner hour, you know, having a drink with dinner and having the cutoff be when dinner's done, drinks are done. And I'm not going to go over two drinks while I'm having dinner. Um, you know, it's going to be a nice glass of wine. It's going to be uh, a nice beer. Maybe it's one of the beers that I've been brewing. You know, I try to brew some, some relatively healthy beer. I know it sounds like a paradox, but you know, that's another video for another day. Kind of like the super sandwiches. Um, I have my own theory and my own ways of trying to optimize beer. So, you know, I'll have my beer, I'll have my glass of wine, and that's usually around 4.30, 5 o'clock as I'm prepping dinner, eating dinner, and then when dinner's done, the alcohol's done. Now, deciding to have my drink earlier in the evening isn't just a, you know, let's, let's race the clock to see how early I can get a drink in. It's more about timing it so it's not close to when I'm going to sleep because there have been several studies that have shown that alcohol can really interrupt your sleep and your sleep cycles. And you know what, this, this whoop right here, this bad boy will tell you firsthand what alcohol does. You have a bunch of drinks, you go to bed, you're going to wake up, your heart rate variability is going to be terrible, you're going to sleep hot, so your resting heart rate is going to be high, your sleep cycles are going to be erratic, you're not going to have the proper sleep you're supposed to have, and your recovery score is going to be terrible. And you have a terrible recovery score, guess what? You're uh, more susceptible for injury, more susceptible for sickness. And I've said this a million times on this channel, those two things don't have any part in what I'm trying to do. So I want to sleep well, but I want to have my couple drinks. So I make sure I have those earlier in the evening. So let me pull up a little article here on how alcohol affects quality and quantity of sleep. This article does a good job of outlining a few different bullet points on what alcohol is doing to your sleep. Uh, again, this is why I time my drink up earlier in the evening, get it away from when I'm going to bed. I want it to be like three and a half, four hours before I go to bed from my last drink. I don't want to drink and then lay down and fall asleep because sure, alcohol might make you fall asleep easier, but it's going to interrupt your sleep throughout the night. It's going to jack your sleep up. All right, guys, kind of my second strategy around alcohol is using N-acetylcysteine or NAC as a liver detoxifier. Um, and this is just kind of in my everyday supplement pack, uh, what NEC does is it is a precursor in the body to glutathione, which is the body's most powerful antioxidant. And it's also great for detoxifying the liver, binding to acetylaldehyde, which is one of the byproducts of excessive alcohol buildup in the system. It's one of those things that make you feel awful after you have too much. It's kind of responsible for the hangover feeling. And NEC binds and detoxifies that. Um, I have a cool study here that I'd like to show. Um, and this basically looked at what NAC did with alcohol-induced oxidative stress in rats and found that ethanol-induced liver damage is associated with oxidative stress and co-administration of NAC attenuates this damage effectively in the rat model. So I know rats aren't humans, we're very different, but this study showed that NAC was able to successfully detoxify oxidative stress associated with alcohol consumption. 
You know, I want to be social with my friends. I want to be social with my family. And at the same time, I want to be proactive. So if I know that I'm going to have a, a dinner or a night where I'm going to have more than two drinks, I'm probably going to take 600 milligrams of NAC, which is a standard capsule, about a half hour before I start drinking. And that's going to help mitigate some of this damage. And then I'm going to do the same thing when I'm done drinking. I'm going to take another tablet. Um, these are very safe supplements. They're effective. Um, it's actually administered intravenously to patients who have overdosed on acetaminophen or other similar drugs and need to have their livers detoxified. So it is used in the medical profession. It's good stuff. It's fairly inexpensive and you can find it anywhere. Uh, Thorne offers a nice clean NAC product. That's what I use. All right, another strategy, and it may seem like a no-brainer, but it is to excessively hydrate. Uh, and this is especially important because I'm going to have my drink around 5 o'clock, and that is only a couple hours after I've exercised. And when you exercise, you're going to naturally kind of dehydrate yourself. So I want to make sure I'm in a hydrated state. I'm not going to go back-to-back -back drinks without having a glass of water. And I'm going to make sure that if, for whatever reason, I've had more than two drinks and I really need to hydrate, I love this uh, product called Catalyte. Again, Thorne makes it, and it is a great, great, great electrolyte powder. Uh, much, much better than Gatorade or Pedialyte. You don't have all those nasty sweeteners in it. And it is much better formulated from a scientific standpoint of addressing some of the uh, deficiencies that dehydration causes to the body. And if you have more than a couple of glasses of alcohol, you're going to dehydrate yourself and you're going to be lacking some of these important vitamins and minerals that you need to be at optimal hydration, optimal health. And that's really another reason why we feel the effects of alcohol so much after a big night of boozing is because we're dehydrated and you need to be properly hydrated for the body to carry out its functions properly. And that's why Catalyte kind of fits into this picture from trying to reclaim that hydration, trying to jumpstart the hydration process. I sip Catalyte during my workout so I can be proactive during the day. So when I get to that point at 5 p.m. where I'm going to have my drink, I'm already in a good state of hydration. I'm not dehydrated going into my drinks because, man, they might dehydrate me a little bit, and I don't want that. I don't want to be hungover. I don't want the alcohol to have poor effects on me. And again, I know when they do because the whoop's not going to lie. It's going to tell me. All right, guys, kind of my last little tidbit, and this is kind of just a, a bonus tidbit. This is the case that you had a little bit too much to drink and you feel like crap the next day. You're a little hungover. One thing that I've done that has helped me is just move around, get some light exercise in, go for a walk, get the blood flowing. Don't just sit on the couch. You're going to feel terrible. Uh, my advice to you is take a nice hot shower, finish with it cold. Uh, get that hot, cold contrast going. Um, if you have a sauna, go in the sauna, steam room, go in the steam room. And then on top of any hot shower, cold shower contrast, take a nice walk outside, you know, nice leisurely walk, do some stretching, some restorative work. You don't need to go crazy and kill yourself and, and with, with some kind of workout or in the weight room. Hydrate aggressively while you're doing this and that'll get you back on track. All right, guys, so quick recap here. I start by having my drinks around 5 p.m. in the evening. I'm gonna make sure that it's been at least four hours from that last drink till when I go to bed. I'm going to supplement with N-acetylcysteine or NAC. I'm gonna take one tablet of that about a half hour before any excessive drinking. So that means you know maybe a big dinner with friends or family where you're gonna have a few glasses of wine. Um, if I'm just gonna have my regular one to two drinks, I will just put that N-acetylcysteine uh, in with my normal vitamin and supplement regimen. The next tactic was staying hydrated. And I like to use Catalyte from Thorn to stay hydrated. I'm gonna sip that during my workouts so I'm nice and hydrated going into my one or two drinks in the evening. And if I have a couple extra drinks that I wasn't supposed to have, I'm going to make sure I'm going to have some catalyte after that to hydrate before I go to bed. And I'll probably wake up the next morning and have some more catalyte to make up on any lost electrolytes, vitamins, minerals that my body is missing from the drinking. Lastly, you had a little too much, a hot shower, cold shower contrast, and light movement light exercise, like a walk, stretching, foam rolling, all that kind of stuff. Guys, I hope this helps. These are just a couple of my strategies. If you guys found this video useful, please, please, please hit that like button. And even better yet, 
subscribe so you don't miss out on content like this. And if you have any suggestions, throw them down in the comments. I'd love to hear it. I'd love some ideas for some future video posts. I love this kind of stuff, guys. It's my goal to live to 100. I want you to live to 100 too. And I want us to be happy and healthy doing it so we can enjoy those old, happy, glorious late years in life. Um, because that's what they should be. They shouldn't be years that are filled with a ton of pills and a wheelchair and you can't move around and you're not enjoying your friends and family because you can't move. You know, that's, that's terrible. I don't think anybody wants to live like that. We don't have to. We can be smart along the way. Uh, and so let's do this journey together. Hit that subscribe button and, and we can do it. So yeah, guys, thanks for joining me. This has been just a little tidbit on how to strategize and be tactical around alcohol. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you later.